Not too long ago, I was trapped in the mindset that candlestick patterns should just work. They're time-tested patterns that have been used for years, right? So engulfing candles, hammers, shooting stars, these candlestick patterns should work. But even though that's the case, I was consistently losing money when I placed trades using these types of patterns. Shortly after that, I discovered that they do work. These candlestick patterns can work and give you increased odds of success in a trading opportunity, but only if you use the correct combination of candlesticks and you do so at areas of confluence. So in today's video, what I want to do is share with you the discovery that I made and my favorite combination of candlesticks to use to enter a trade in an aggressive way that gives me a high likelihood of being correct about the direction of the market. In this case, it's going to be the Forex market, but this type of analysis has worked for me across all financial markets, including crypto, Forex, and stocks. I'm going to share with you that combination of candlesticks along with the confluence I like to use to give myself the best opportunity for success in a trade using these candlestick patterns. So if that sounds good to you, go ahead and click that like button for me. Smash it if you want to. Go ahead and hit subscribe and the notification bell if you are new. And I'll see you right after the intro and disclaimer. Okay, so here we are on the Euro New Zealand. I'm going to go ahead and open up a live trade with you using the exact combination of candlestick patterns you're going to learn in this video. And with this being the case, I'm going to go ahead and place my entry here. I want my stop loss to be under the zone of structure I've laid out, which I'll teach you how to do in this video. My first target is going to be at a 1.4 to 1 reward risk ratio. Let me go ahead and create the order, market order. I'm going to do a 2% risk on this specific trade. And I am involved. All right, let's go ahead and break down this combination of candlestick patterns. I'll see you there. That Euro New Zealand trade you just saw me enter will be rolling live throughout this video and later on towards the end of the video we will check out how it's doing and see if it's hit, stops, or targets hopefully. But for now let's go ahead and dive into this combination of candlestick patterns. This combination of candlestick patterns has been one of the best discoveries that I've made throughout my trading career and anytime you are trading based on candlestick patterns, one of the most important parts of that is having specific rules you follow for that candlestick pattern in order to identify it because otherwise you're going to be really inconsistent in the way you trade it. Because of that, let me go ahead and show you my rules for hammer and shooting star candles. So on the screen, you can see a hammer and shooting star candle from my definition. I identify these in a very simple and objective way. I take a Fibonacci retracement from the low of the candle to the high of the candle for a bullish signal. If the entire body, meaning the open and close of this candle, is above the 38.2% retracement, I count that as a buy signal or hammer candle. You don't have to call it a hammer. I know this isn't the exact definition of a hammer candlestick, but this to me is buying pressure and a buying signal. Similarly, for a shooting star, I take a Fibonacci retracement from the high of the candle, the highest wick, to the low of the candle or lowest wick and as long as the open and close open and close of the entire candle is below the 38.2 percent retracement i consider that a selling signal or a bearish candlestick pattern similar to a shooting star candle now this information is widely known on the internet you can find plenty of youtube videos you can find investopedia articles about hammers and shooting star candles about engulfing candles all these candlestick patterns have been known for years but you are likely losing money when you try to trade them i was losing money while trading them what did i change that made them start adding profits to my account that made them start adding higher probabilities to my trading opportunities a little thing called confirmation. It's amazing what happens when you wait for this kind of candlestick pattern and then you just wait one more candle to see what price does. How many times have you seen price create a candlestick that looks like this and then a big red candle follows it and you entered up here and ended up stopped out on the very next candle? The reason for that is because you didn't wait for confirmation. The form of confirmation we're going to use. There's plenty of forms of confirmation. You could put a buy stop order above the candle. That's a really popular way to do so. You can wait for a candle to just break above this high and then close above it. There's plenty of forms of confirmation. What we're going to be using today 
It's just a same color candle. What I mean by that is when I'm looking at these types of candlestick patterns, something that added an incredible amount of accuracy is waiting for this candlestick pattern and then waiting for a green candle right after it. This candlestick pattern is already showing me buying pressure. And if I can see that bulls or buyers continue to take control, even after this big signal of buying pressure, that can add an aggressive amount of accuracy to a specific trading opportunity. For a bearish trade, it would be the opposite. We would wait for the bearish signal candle followed by a red candle for that confirmation candle. Now there's a lot more that goes into this than just having that confirmation candle, so stick with me. But this is the first part, and what we're gonna do now is actually take a look at what this looks like. Having these types of candlesticks, shooting star and hammer candles, with confirmation on real charts. So let's dive down into some real charts, and I'll share that with you. The first example we're gonna take a look at is on the pound yen. It's gonna be a bullish example. What I want you to do is see if you can spot the candlestick that is a hammer candle followed by a green candle. Now, hopefully some of you, or maybe all of you were able to spot this one and this one. Now I'm going to tell you this, it's more accurate if the hammer candle is green, but in certain situations I will trade it even if the color of the hammer candle is red. For this scenario and for this example, let's assume you only trade if your hammer candle is green followed by a green candle. That would be this trade right here. As you can see, this trade happens and if we put a position tool on the chart, that is somewhere around where our entry would be. We would have a stop loss somewhere under the swing low. And for me, I like to aim for about a 1.4 to 1 initial target on these types of trades. You can see that that would have played out really well. Just wanted to give you an example of what a bullish version of this looks like on real charts. Next up, let's take a look at a bearish example. For that, we're going to go to the pound Aussie. Here on the pound Aussie, one hour chart, see if you can spot the shooting star candle followed by a red candle. It's right in the middle of the screen, so hopefully you were able to see this. Right here is a perfect example of the candlestick combination you're learning today. And the reason is, if we hold a Fibonacci retracement, I didn't do this for the bullish version, we'll go back and do that in just a second, but for a bearish version, what are we looking for? We're looking for this whole body of this red candle to be below the 38.2% retracement. Is that happening here? Yes, it is. We are also looking for a red candle to directly follow that. Do we get that here? That candlestick combination that you're learning today, does it happen right here? Of course it does. So in this case, we would have a trade that looked something like this. Stop loss above the swing high. Again, I like my initial targets to be about a 1.4 to 1 reward to risk ratio. You can decide on stops and targets for yourself. But a question for you before we move forward. Do you think if you go out and trade this candlestick pattern combination, a hammer plus a green candle or a shooting star plus a red candle that you're all of a sudden going to start making money hand over fist trading. Hopefully you said no. And if you didn't say no, take it from me and my own personal experience. You will not make money if you just go out and start trading this by itself. With that being the case, you're probably wondering, well, Steven, why am I learning it then? Why are you teaching me this candlestick pattern if it doesn't work by itself? Well, you see, when I first started trading, I truly believed that there was some type of perfect secret candlestick pattern that all the professional traders that were making money were hiding from all of us retail normal traders. But in reality, that's not the case. The reality of the situation that we're all in as traders is that there's no secret. There is no secret candlestick pattern that wins all the time. What we have to do as traders is combine a number of technical factors that give an advantage when we combine them all. Combining these two candlesticks is a way to enter after combining the other confluence that we have to worry about. So right now, what I want to give you, now that you know the candlestick patterns themselves, is how I like to use different confluence around them to create some of the most accurate trading opportunities that could possibly exist for me and my own personal trading. With that being the case, let's first go back, take a look at our pound yen and talk about that candlestick pattern because I did not pull my Fibonacci on this. So you may be a little bit confused. First off here on this pattern, what do we have to do? We have to go from the low of our 38.2% candle up to our 
high of this bullish hammer candle, if that's what you want to call it, as long as the body of this candle is above the 38.2% retracement, we have a bullish signal as long as we get a green candle after that, we have a confirmation. Now, what are the confluences I add to this in order to create really accurate trading opportunities? You're gonna find out right now. See you in a second. One of my favorite ways to trade this candlestick pattern combination is with the trends. So with that being the case, let's quickly go up to a whiteboard and explain what I mean by with the trends. So when trading this type of candlestick formation, what I like to do is ensure that price is in a trend, which essentially means that we are consistently making higher highs and higher lows in price. Now, what I want to see while this is happening and what I'm really attempting to do with this candlestick pattern is catch the end of a pullback with our candlestick pattern. In the case of a bullish trade, that would be a bullish hammer followed by a green candle. That's what I would be looking at at the end of a pullback. And you may be thinking, well, how do I know the end of a pullback is going to be the end of the pullback? And the answer is we never really know that. We're just trying to give ourselves a statistic advantage, which I'll explain a little more about later on. Now, another thing, another area, another way I like to use confluence with this in order to make it even more of an accurate situation to place a trade in with this candlestick pattern is to ensure that it lines up with a previous level of structure. So for an uptrend, there are two main levels of structure that I pay attention to. So let's go ahead and just break this down from the very beginning. You know the patterns that we're looking for. Hammer candle plus a green candle for a bullish trade. We wanna ensure that price is consistently making higher highs and higher lows. And then when we get a new higher high, what we're trying to do is wait for that pullback to begin this pullback right here, and we want to attempt to catch the bottom of this pullback. Adding the structure level as confluence, oftentimes this previous resistance level will act as support. So that could give you a really good hint into this area being where the pullback ends. So if we get the confluence of with the trend plus a pullback into the previous area of structure, then that could be a really good reason to expect if we in fact get that candlestick combination of a green hammer followed by a green candle. If we get that, we have a high probability of bulls taking control. When I say bulls, I just mean buyers taking control from this area of previous structure in this uptrend. Now, the previous area of resistance that was broken, like here, is not the only area that we see buyers come in very often. The other area is this level of support right here that was the previous swing low before the break into new highs. So these are the two levels I like to pay attention to. And this, of course, is for a bullish example. If we come back down into this previous swing low and we were to get that pattern or that combination of candlesticks that we've been talking about throughout this video, then this would also give you an indication or a hint that buyers want to take over here and a high likelihood chance of price continuing higher. Now, Let's go ahead and quickly do a bearish version of all this so that you understand the concept behind this entire strategy or philosophy of trading. Then we'll dive down some charts and take a look at a couple of examples and we'll go over the Euro New Zealand over to the Euro New Zealand and see how that trade's playing out. Also towards the end of the video, I'm going to give you guys my analysis and the major levels of structure that I'm paying attention to across a few different currency pairs. But for a bearish trend, what would we want to see? If a bullish trend is higher highs and higher lows, a bearish trend is lower lows and lower highs, followed by lower lows, lower highs, lower lows, lower highs. Now, in this situation, we wanna see that shooting star candle followed by a red candle. In that case, we have the combination of candlesticks that we've been talking about all day. What are the other confluence we need to add to that? Well, we want to make sure that we're in a downtrend. Are we making lower lows and lower highs at this point? Yes, we are. The next level of confluence is, are we at a level of structure that can hint to us that it's going to be the end of this pullback? Because after we make this new low, inevitably we're going to start pulling back. And what we're trying to catch is the end of that pullback before trend continuation that breaks into new lows. 
a good hint that we're at the end of a pullback as the previous level of support during a downtrend or the previous level of resistance before the break like this into new lows. So with that being the case, these are the two levels I would be paying attention to and looking for this type of pattern in. And if we got this type of pattern in either of these cases, it may be something I consider trading based on the rules of this philosophy of trading. So those were some examples on the whiteboard. Let's now go take a look at a couple of examples down on real charts, then check out the Euro New Zealand. Then I'll share with you guys some of the major levels of structure I'm paying attention to across the Forex market. On this chart, do you think we're in an uptrend or a downtrend? Well, if we start marking off swing levels, we can see that we went from swing high to swing low. We created a new higher low, a new higher high, a new higher low, and a new higher high. This is screaming uptrend. So now we have our first confluence, which is that we are in an uptrend. The next thing I would do is mark out the previous level of resistance that was broken, which would look something like that. And if you wanted to mark out the level of support as well, you would go there and there. Next up, we would want to see what? We would want to see a pullback into this area and our confirmation candles, which are going to be that hammer candle followed by a green candle for a bullish trade. Let's check out what happens here as we push up and then start to push down. We're not quite in our zone yet, but here, what do we have? Here we have price in an uptrend, pulling back to an area of value, which is the previous resistance that was broken and putting in what looks to be a 38.2% candle or a hammer candle, whatever you would like to call it is irrelevant. Checking it out here, you can see that the entire body of this candle closes above the 38.2% retracement. If I click ahead one candle, you'll see that this in fact, is a green candle therefore we have a valid potential opportunity here on this trade and it would look something like this we would enter the market i say we this is what i like to do you trade however you would like to i would enter the market there have a stop loss down at the swing low have my initial target at a 1.4 clicking play and there we go easily hit targets if this trade looks familiar that is because it's the same pound yen we looked at earlier but now let's take a look at a bearish example on the pound aussie as well and then we're going to check in on that euro new zealand trade and see how it's going here on this chart uptrend or a downtrend well, hopefully you said downtrend we have a high pushing down now to a low a lower high a lower low a lower high and a lower low so at this point what would you do you have your first bias, which is a downtrend. You know you're looking for the shooting star followed by a red candle. You would then mark out, all right, we have a support level that is just broken. Here's my previous resistance level. I would pay attention in these areas because they are my areas of confluence. And I would pay attention for the candlestick pattern confirmation that you've learned today. Here we go, pushing forward, price pushes up. We never get anything that looks like a 38.2 candle slash shooting star there. And then, what happens here? Well, here we end up getting what looks like a nice shooting star candle. We can confirm that with the Fibonacci retracement. The entire body of this candle is, in fact, under the 38.2 percentile on our Fibonacci retracement. Next up, what do we need to see? A nice red candle. If we get those two things in combination, we have what we need for an entry, stop loss, wherever you want to go, target 1.4 to 1. And this trade, yet again, if I hit play, you can see hit targets. Now, I know those were both winning trades, but after seeing that, do you really believe that every single time you see the scenario happen, you're in trend, you're at the major level of structure, and you see this candlestick pattern combination, that that trade's gonna win every single time? No, right? Unfortunately, we're not wizards with a crystal ball. We can't tell the future. And no matter how many times we watch Harry Potter, there's no way we'll ever be able to control the markets or know exactly what it's going to do at this exact moment. That's not what profitable trading is about. I wish it was that easy. I wish there was a way to know exactly what price was going to do next, but there's not. So why do we even have stuff like this then? Why do we have a strategy? Why do we have rules? Because these rules, these candlestick patterns, along with this confluence of structure and trend is what goes together. It's the technical factors that come together in order to give us an advantage over a large sample size of trades. You've probably heard of sample sizes. You've probably heard of probabilities before. If doing this 
can give me a 60% chance to win these trades or even a 50% chance to win these trades. And I consistently win at a 1.4 to 1. If I get, you know, 20 to 50 trades a month, or if I'm day trading 100 trades a month, or if I'm swing trading 20 trades a month, I'm still going to be profitable by the end of the year in a major way. And that's how we trade profitably. Again, remember when I said earlier, I used to think there was some kind of big secret. And after years and years, I've been trading for almost a decade at this point. After a decade of trading, I've realized there's not a secret that it just comes down to having a strategy or advantage over the market, a way of trading that gives you a better shot of making money than losing money over the year. That's what an advantage is. If you can have that and have a good risk management plan that keeps you out of your emotions, keeps you emotionless while you're trading, along with good trading psychology by understanding the way the market moves and understanding that you're going to go through drawdown and losing streaks, you're gonna lose some trades, preparing yourself for that psychologically, those are the things you have to master. It's not a big secret. It's just an extremely daunting and time-consuming process. Sorry, I'm not here to sell you on the life of your dreams right now because that's not going to happen right now. You want to know what was happening when I was learning how to trade? I was living in a one-bedroom apartment on the bad side of town and I could barely afford my power bill. I was roofing houses all day and then coming home and studying charts, back testing, trying to create strategies until 2 or 3 a.m. I would wake up at 6 a.m., go back to roof houses and do that six days a week. It doesn't look glorious when you start. Right now, I'm so glad that I made it through that trial period because of what my life has become because of that trial period and making it through that. So it's absolutely worth it. But try not to pay attention to the Instagram accounts and the gurus that are promising you millions next week because that's not how it starts. Millions are possible. Financial freedom is possible. I'm living proof. But the way it starts is with a shitload of work, a shitload of dedication, and a lot of studying these candlestick charts. Let's go ahead and take a look here at our Euro New Zealand trade. As you can see, we are currently about break even minus the spread here on this trade. And if we look at this trade, you'll see a lot of similarities between this and what we've been studying throughout the entire video. What do we have trend wise? Are we making new higher highs compared to the previous high? And have we made a new higher low right here compared to the previous low? Yeah. And now what we're expecting because we're in this trend, because we have a pullback to the previous level that was broken, is this to be the end of the pullback as we continue back into trend continuation to the upside. And when we're here, what are we looking for? We're looking for a situation where we get a 38.2% candle or hammer candle followed by a green candle. And we get that here. I ended up entering a little bit late just because I saw this trade late. And that's totally fine. Sometimes if you're willing to do that, depending on your trading plan, mine allows me to do so. And that's why we're involved here. Again, about at break even. We'll keep an eye on this though. We're about to go over some of my favorite areas of structure in the markets for this week across the entire Forex market. But before we do, areas like this is the entire reason I'm in this trade on the Euro New Zealand. And this is an area that I sent out in the Pro Trader Report. You can see it right over here for all the members of our paid program, the EAP. Now, the Pro Trader Report is something that I'm about to start including into the TTC Forex University. In this TTC Forex University, you get an entire university style course with over 70 videos that goes through trading psychology, the basics of Forex in case you're brand new, technical analysis mastery course to get you up to speed on everything technical analysis, along with a strategy mastery course to teach you a few different strategies, the backtesting mastery course to show you how to backtest and optimize those strategies, a risk management course, a trading plan course, the strategy vault with new strategies added, the discretionary trading course. Along with all of that, we're also about to start adding advanced patterns into this course. And along with that, again, we're going to start adding the pro trader report as well. And with all of that coming to the TTC FX University, I'm going to have to raise prices because it's going to cause me and my team to have to do a lot more work. But right now, you can still get in at the original pre-launch price of $497. So if you're interested in that, go to www.ttcfxuniversity.com. It's also on the screen and it's in the description. If you'd like to take part in that, go ahead. If not, that's totally fine too. Let's go ahead and dive into some of the major areas of structure I'm looking at for possible trades this week.
Okay, so right now I'm looking at three different currency pairs. The first one is going to be the Aussie New Zealand. On the Aussie New Zealand, I have a couple of different areas I'm paying attention to for possible trades. The first one is between 1.0819 and 1.0789. This is an area of resistance that has been tested multiple times looking left. You can see that right here, 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 and here. So with that being the case, if price continues higher, this will be an area that I look for a possible pullback, possible counter trend trade in this red area. Now, if price continues lower or pushes lower, then I'll be looking for a possible buy trade to continue this uptrend between 1.0650 and 1.0614. That'll be an area I look for possible buy trades. The next pair we're gonna take a look at is the New Zealand Yen. On the New Zealand Yen, we actually have an area of structure that I'm paying attention to for possible buy trades. The reason is because this area on a lower time frame has been resistance before and that resistance level has been broken. This level is between 76.75 and 76.29. And in this area, not only is it a level of resistance that's been broken on a lower time frame, but it's also a level of support and resistance that's been tested multiple times here on the daily chart. With that being the case, I'm looking at this level and what I'm gonna be doing is going down to a smaller time frame and asking myself, the same question we've been talking about, do I get some type of candlestick pattern confirmation on a lower time frame, like the four hour chart or the one hour chart? This is the way I'm gonna be doing my analysis here on the New Zealand yen. I may look for a chart pattern, like a double bottom in this area as well, but this is an area, the area in green that I'm looking for possible trades. The next pair we're gonna take a look at is the New Zealand dollar. So looking at this pair, you can already see that we've had a downtrend happening so far and we've made new lows a new lower high and a new lower low at this point what i was waiting on is to see if price came back up into our previous level of support that could possibly turn into resistance again on a pullback when we see a, a market moving like this and price pushing lower a really good indication that we could see a continuation of that trend is if price creates a resistance level where previous support was. So in this case, on the daily chart, what do you see? Do we have that 38.2% candle or shooting star candle followed by a red candle? Well, let's check it. On the first candle, yes, the entire body of this candle is below the 38.2% retracement. Do we have a red candle following that? Well, yeah, we do. We have a red candle following that. So this is a good example of the exact candlestick pattern you've learned throughout this video happening on the daily chart. So if you were going to, or excuse me, if I was going to enter this trade, it would look something like this. I would be entering there. I would have a stop loss above my entry candle. I would actually have a stop loss above the area of structure that I was paying attention to. So something like that. Again, I like to take a 1.4 to 1 reward to risk ratio on my first position. So this is how my trade would look if I was trading in this particular situation in this particular scenario. But with that being said, that is my analysis on the pairs that I'm paying attention to throughout this week. I really hope you guys have had a great weekend so far. I hope you guys trade green throughout the rest of the week. Be sure to subscribe, click the like button on this video, and go check out the TTC Forex University if you want to improve your trading as fast as possible. I'll see you guys in the next video. Talk soon.